Welcome back, friends. Uh, it's been crazy, but it's fall, and I'm just loving it because I can get out here and work, and, and it's not too hot. I mean, I I can usually open the south door and open the north door and get a breeze going. I had a buddy give me a really neat fan. It's uh, one of them, I don't know, it's probably a 30-inch fan, and you put it up on the wall, and it's got an, uh, an articulating arm on it, so it'll sit there and turn. Uh, two motors. It's like a 110 volt where you plug into the outlet, which I'm going to wire into a switch. That way, if I want it to stop in one particular spot, I just shut the switch off. And if I want it to just move around, I'll flip the switch on. Really simple. Really nice fan. Uh, but anyway, it's a freebie for him, so he just passed it on. Thank goodness. It's a blessing to have friends. True blessing to have friends, really. Thank you all for at least watching. All three of you. Uh, it is getting time, in the United States anyway. We're going to be voting next week. Bam! Uh, so I encourage you, if you're in the United States, vote. I don't give a shit who you vote for. Just vote, for Pete's sake. That's the most important thing. I'm going to fix myself a drink, because I'm just pooped. Four roses. I, I like this. It's a good some. There's a place in Kansas City that uses it as a well. It's like you're using four roses as a well. You got more money than I do. Uh, where's this bottled at? Uh, Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Somewhere down there, Kentucky's got like a hundred distilleries. I I only went to one. That was in Lexington, and uh, I don't know. Oh, and not a fan of it. Anyway, 40% by volume, which is norm, really. Uh, anything above that's not really drinkable as far as bourbons go. I think I got some of that small batch from Wood Hat um, in the freezer that's quite hot. But I'd like to tell you, I, I stopped by there uh, at the Wood Hat distillery. It's just uh, west of St. Louis on I-70. Um there's a winery right there. It's a curling vines or twisted vines winery. Um, and then next door is a Wood Hat Distillery. And the old man, God, I, I don't know, I'd say he's 80 years old. Um, he still works there. He still goes to work every day and all that. And they've got, like, um, different types of corn. It's mostly all corn whiskey. And they've got different types of corn out back that they they have like test rows, and then they'll um, lease it out to a farmer, and and have them bring in you know a hundred bushels or something to make a batch. Anyway, it's really neat. I, I would definitely recommend stopping in there. Um, I, I can't tell you exactly uh, somewhere between Jonesburg and and New Florence, Warrenton area. Anyway. It's a pretty neat place. Stop in, visit the folks there, and uh, try some of their whiskeys. They have honey, too, um, out, of the, out of the barrel. They put, I think they put the honey in a barrel. I don't know. I don't know exactly how they do it, but they got everything going on there. I think they have 120 acres, and they got all kinds of stuff going on between the honeys and the test plots of corn and whatever else they got. Anyway, really neat. Just a real small place, um, and... I think they have good whiskey, but the barrels that they use, I'm not a fan of. So, so the barrel age stuff, I steer clear of. I just, uh, I'm just a fan of white corn whiskey. It's really good to me, but everybody's got different taste buds. But Four Roses is good stuff. It's real good whiskey. If you're out shopping and you've never had it, don't be afraid to buy it. Uh, it's not terribly expensive, but it's not super cheap either. But we deserve it. Hard week's work. Oh, that's just right. Man, that's good. Um, so if you haven't noticed, uh, the MG is gone. I sold the MG a few months ago. This spring when we were down around St. Louis running around, um, I decided to shop for another car. Uh, I, I want to give you a walkthrough of it sometime. It's, uh, I think, a 2001 Audi TT. 
think we're going to name it Black Betsy. I already have Black Betty. That's the Subaru. Um, but with two T's. You know? Anyway, I thought that was cool. Uh, I had to do a few things to it. Uh, Reupholster the seats and, and some engine work. Just little stuff. Nothing major. And really got it at a great price. I paid $100 less for the Audi than in, in 2022 than I did for the MG in 2004. Now, wrap, wrap your head around that. I, I got a good deal. Um, anyway, we've been driving it around. Uh, we really like it. Air conditioning, cruise control. The heater doesn't work super good. I don't know. Maybe I need to flush the uh, heater core out or something. But anyway, runs great. It, it's nothing super. It's not a it's not a death machine. The MG, in in I think 2015 when I put that rotary Mazda engine in it, was a death trap. It was, you know, we were going down to uh, Phoenix last year in the fall. We went straight 26 hours down and back and. Uh, you know, I told Sherry, I said, no, this is, this is a race car. It's just detuned a little bit, but this is, I mean, this is no joke. And we just filled up on gas because we had to stop every hundred freaking miles for gasoline. Seven gallon tank, 20 miles a gallon. You do the math. 20 miles a gallon with a tailwind on a good day. Anyway, uh, we come out of, we come out of the gas station and Sherry's like, rah! shifts gear and I'm like Jesus Christ calm down calm down and we went by and there was a cop sitting there I'm like oh god we're gonna get fucking pulled over you know and they let her on by I, I don't know but it, it was fun she enjoyed driving it I enjoyed trying not to kill myself in it uh, numerous trips down to Kansas City and back and just I'd have dad in there you know and we'd be passing every car on the road we were running you know 100 miles an hour just cruising and Dad's like, Jesus, you don't have to drive the son of a bitch like a race car. And I said, e every car is a race car, Dad. Anyway, good times. Uh, we enjoyed the car for 20 years. Now it's gone, and we've got the Audi. Uh, I'll give you a walkthrough on it. I, I hope you really like it. I know I like it. Um, like I said, it's not a ball of fire, but it does well. It does fine. Everybody's like, oh, my God, you've got a TT. That's got a turbocharger in it. Well, let me tell you something. You, you don't know what you're talking about until you drive that crazy-ass MG with the rotary engine in it. There was no turbo in that. That was just naturally aspirated, detuned, had it dialed way down, and it's still, you know, just insanity. Uh, but good times. It's gone. Got the other one here. Uh, we are going to Phoenix uh, Thanksgiving. We're going to be gone all week. I get a nice little seven-day vacation because work has been killing me. Well, I mean, uh, work, and then I got this stupid thing. Uh, I got a Jeep out there that I got to get the transmission out of, and this is... Uh, miracle work that my Subaru guy wanted me to do and it is almost done I've got everything back together and hopefully it can be gone in a couple days and all my MG stuff's gone I sold the engines to a guy down at Lake Ozark he uh he restores the Amphiba cars it kind of looks like a Corvair and it's got the little propeller in the back like under the trunk and it's got a, a shifter inside of it and you drive down into the water, and then you pull up on the shifter lever, and it engages the uh, engages the propeller in the back, and you drive on the lake. Uh, look it up if you don't know what it is. But anyway, he's a real nice guy. He's invited me to come down. That'd, that'd be pretty cool to take a ride in one of those. But I'll drag Dad along with me because Dad would love something like that. Uh, I think I have two transmissions here, but everything else is gone. It's it's cleaning season. Usually we're supposed to do that in the spring, right? Yeah, well, I'm doing it the other way around. Get rid of all this crap and work on the next set of projects. But nothing's going to be uh, make a, the mess that the MG and the Subaru stuff has made in my shop. And, of course, as soon as I get rid of the MG stuff and get it all hauled off, somebody's going to, well, probably this guy is going to be calling me. Hey, I have this Subaru, you know, can you work on it? And, it turns into a mess. My first question, does it burn oil? Does it leak oil? And they always say, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, does it knock? Well, uh, no, it's it's bad. It's bad. Do me a favor. If you're going to buy a Subaru, buy something that's like 90 to 97, 98. That after that, no, they changed some things. I'm not going to go into detail, but anyway, I, I'm able to fix them. 
if they don't knock and I fix them where they won't have failures in the future. But it's a pain in the ass. I'm just telling you. Anyway, uh, yeah, I hope everyone goes out Tuesday and votes in the United States. That's super important. Um, just there's there's going to be some major changes, right? We already know the major change is coming. Uh, but I, I don't know. I don't know. We are in a financial train wreck right now. Um, there's a lot of people in financial train wrecks, but we're still living good, right? We're still able to we're still able to to help our neighbors out and you know afford to eat and travel. Uh, I don't know. We just do it. We just get by. Uh, that's all that that's that's all that matters. Just uh, enjoy your life, you know. Um, help others out. Help your neighbor out. I I've been doing some charity work. I went down to Steve's uh, near. Uh, I don't know if you can read that. Call Sign Brewing. That's uh, my buddy. He's got the brewery in North Kansas City. We moved all his stuff to a enormous facility. I don't know. I'm not good with space. I don't measure out things like that. But eighty thousand square feet, maybe. I don't know. It's like a it's an old building, old brick building in North Kansas, North Kansas City, and it is enormous. And he's got it all set up. It's just beautiful, beautiful place. Um, and he's getting his signs up now. He's been in. He's been occupying the place, I think, since December of 21. I think that's right. And then uh, he opened it back up. It might have been September 21. Then he opened it back up in January, February. We were out of town for my birthday. I think we were in New Orleans when he had his opening weekend. Anyway, um, it's rolling right along. He's hitting all his numbers. But his signs, uh, he, he had banners up, and they're shredded. So he's got aluminum sign made, and uh, we were going to do some backlighting, and I spent three days, well, three afternoons uh, after work, just like a couple hours a day, soldering uh, soldering wires on the pins to make the connectors and made jumper wires, and we decided the backlighting was going to be a pain in the dick, so we ended up pivoting and going, we're going to go with overhead lights, um, but we did get the signs all assembled, and they're going to hang them hopefully next week and get the lights in. Um, so the, there'll be like street lights that, that hang over the top of the sign and kind of shine back on the building and on the sign. And then there'll be LEDs so you can hit a button and change the color. So I, like on Fridays when the Chiefs are playing, they'll hit it, or on Sundays they'll hit it, and it'll be red. And then when the Royals or uh, the Tide... No, not the type of current. Kansas City current. Sorry, ladies. Female uh, Kansas City soccer team. They got a male soccer team, too, uh, sporting Kansas City. Anyway, they'll be able to change the lights to, you know, accommodate those uh, those teams and kind of support the support the, the city. Um, what's that kid's name? Patrick Mahomes. Uh, his wife's building the stadium for the Kansas City current right down by the river. Uh what an amazing thing to do, you know, uh, just amazing people. Um, speaking of amazing people, I, uh, I bought tickets for the Larkin Poe Show uh, January, right? January 24th or something. It's on a Tuesday, which I really wish it could have been on a Friday, but hopefully you get sold out and, you know, you can come in and do your thing. Uh, I think it's going to be a good show. I bought, uh, I don't know how many, 10 tickets. Um Let's see, uh, Steve and Jen and the guys at Wolfpack Barbecue, and plus one on them, and then the Turnbull family, uh, and then Sherry and I. So we got all that rounded up and ready to go. Um, so we'll be there, and uh, that and, and the trip to trip to Phoenix. I said, I think up till then, that's that's all we got planned. I'm fixing a fixing a planned a trip to. Sevierville, um, and then we'll go down to Asheville. Is that right? Asheville, South Carolina, or North Carolina? I don't. I think it's South Carolina. Anyway, we'll run down there in that little Audi and have some fun in the spring. Uh, but we'll see what the winter brings. I don't know. I got a lot of stuff to do in here. I got a lot of clean out. I still have two outboard motors. Uh, Brother Brian called me last week, messing with his old Studebaker truck and wants to put a different engine in it. And I said, well, let's take one of mine. So he came and got an engine out of the way here. 
So, uh, just clearing shit out, clearing out. But there's going to be more cycling in. It's it's kind of like a heartbeat, you know. Crap comes in and crap goes out. Now, if you got crap coming in but not going out, you got a problem. If you're going to take your car to a repair shop, I'll just use this as an example. If you're going to take your car to a, a repair shop and, and there's a bunch of cars outside that never move and they're always there, I would recommend not taking your car to that shop. That means that they can't fix anything. I've seen it time and time again. You know, I've my dad was a mechanic. My grandpa was a mechanic. Um, crap never hung around long. It, you know, it gets fixed and it goes. So, yeah, just word to the wise. Because I haven't been able to find anybody to work on my work truck, my service truck that I have for work. I don't do the work. That's contracted. You know, we have people to do that. But, oh, my gosh, uh, they didn't get a rear hub installed properly and smoked the whole axle housing. Um, I got to take it back in. To a, I'm taking it to a different shop. That They they replaced some parts on the front end of it because it, it was steering, which was all tire related. But, oh, they put a drag link on it, this and that. Well, I was parked there yesterday, and I just got this truck back now. And I was parked yesterday and wiggling the steering wheel, and I heard it clunk, clunking. And, of course, I put a rope on there and got down under the truck and tugged on the rope and watched, you know, what was going on and found the bad part that they should have caught. You just, I don't know. Uh, work ethic in this day and age is non-existent. Um, and I'm, I don't know. I don't know if you're, you all are running into the same problem I am, but nobody wants to do their job. What can I say to convince you to do your job? That's the problem I'm having is half-assed service in what appears to be a service society because nothing's really manufactured in the United States anymore. Very little if it is. So I, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, good things coming and uh, plenty of charity still going. I, I hope you can make that happen as well on your end. I hope if you're in the United States, you vote 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 you know there's a lot of countries that you you cannot vote you know um so it's very important and again i don't care who you vote for and it's none of my business but what is important to me is that people with the ability to go vote uh have that ability due to sacrifices of others so don't let that go to waste. Do not let those sacrifices go to waste. Get out there and, and cast your ballot. That's an important freedom that countries around the world, certain countries, um, you know, that, that they have that a lot of people don't. So uh, think about what's going on and... Don't hesitate to go, go put that ballot in. Cast your vote and make it work. Um, and do right by your neighbor. Live by the golden rule. I'm going to go inside because I'm pooped. I'm going to finish my drink too. That's important. That's very important. Trust me. Anyway, hope everyone had a wonderful, wonderful week. And I hope the rest of your fall goes awesome. Because so far for me, it's, it's great. Oh, two thumbs up. Loving the weather. Loving the ability to come out and do my work in a comfortable environment. Anyway, that's all I got. I'll give you a once-over on that Audi when I get all this crap shuffled out. And I hope you like it. I, I do. So, anyway, we'll talk to you all soon. Have an amazing week.